So today we're going to talk about bad landings, why they happen, and how to correct them. Alright, in our first example here, we're going to show an example of a landing where we don't flare. So a flare is essentially when we get close to the ground, we need to bring the aircraft into a cruise attitude. Uh, let the airspeed die down and eventually the aircraft will, will lose its uh, lose its momentum and lift and gently touch the main wheels. Well, and in this example, I'm going to show what would happen if we don't go into that cruise attitude above the runway. We just keep it maybe a gentle nose down the whole way to the ground. Um, so here we go. We're going to start and uh, I'll get the aircraft configured for a normal approach speed, probably around... Uh, 60 or 70 knots with full flaps. So here we go. So I'm going to slow down. I'm going to put out some flaps. Make sure to trim the aircraft. We need some nose down trim. Now a good way to know if you're going to hit your target. So for me, I'm looking at these big squares here. So like the thousand foot markers. And I'm trying to keep them level so it's not changing in my view. So let's say they start to go down and towards the nose of the aircraft. That means I'm likely going to be too high on approach. So you try to keep them right around here. And you're always making adjustments. So if I get too low on the approach, they might start to go up in the windscreen. So you're just trying to keep it at a constant spot. So in this example, we're going to keep this attitude the whole way into the runway. And we're going to see what happens. I'm not going to round out. I'm not going to flare. I'm just going to... Basically what's going to happen if, if you look at the nose of the aircraft. The nose is probably going to touch it. Here we go, we're getting a little bit closer, keeping the same attitude. Here we go, that was our first bounce, second bounce, third bounce, and we finally touched down on the ground. So I'm just going to stop here. We're going to have a look at the little replay. Alright, so replay. So let's back it up a little bit. Let's switch to the outside, you know. Alright, so you can see here this attitude. I didn't change it at all. See what happens. Boom, hits the ground, bounces back in the air. Now, luckily, luckily, I had the aircraft trimmed and it eventually stabilized and it landed on the runway. So, let's do that example again. An easy way to reset your position. If you want to go back and try again, you can press M to open up your map and you can click on any final approach for whatever runway you're using. And it'll start a new flight, it doesn't take long, and it spawns you back on a final approach for the runway. Just be ready to add power when that happens. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to correct for that uh, mistake of not flaring. So let's say you do end up not flaring, you bounce. I'm going to show you how to recover from that bounce position. So let's increase our speed here. I did that. I pressed Alt T. It gets a little closer. That's fine. All right, I'm going to get the aircraft configured. Drop some flaps. Nose is going to want to go up with the flaps. 
So just be ready with some forward pressure. Let's pitch for 60. Nose down trim, add a bit of power in there. All right, so we're gonna not flare again. We're gonna let the aircraft bounce and we're gonna be ready with some power. We need to add power to not let the aircraft bounce again. And we're gonna hold the nose just touching the horizon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause just when we do bounce, I'm gonna pause the sim. So we're here. So we hit the ground, we bounced. Now, if we look at our outside view, if we just don't, if we don't do anything here, what's gonna happen is the nose is gonna wanna come down again and we might bounce again. So what we need to do, we need, kinda need to stabilize ourselves in this attitude, cause this is a good attitude right here. We need to keep this attitude of the aircraft. We add some power, maybe even a little back pressure, and we let the aircraft gently come back towards the runway. So our first instincts, oh no, we bounced. Let's add some power and hold this attitude. So here we go, three, two, one. So we hold this attitude, now we can gently Bring back the power, decrease, hold the nose up, slowly decrease the power, and we touch down. So that's how you recover from that position. So I'll show you a replay of, of that and how, how that looks in real time. Do it from the outside. So there's our bounce, added the power, Held, holding that attitude, slowly decreasing the power, and we touch down. So that's how you recover from a bounce landing, mainly if you forget to flare, which happens, it can happen. Cool. All right, in this example, I'm gonna flare at a too high of an altitude, so we'll see what happens if we, uh, if we flare at a too high of an altitude. So we're coming in here and we think, oh, it's time to flare. Let's go ahead and flare. So we go power idle, because that's normally what you do. You pull back, boom. Yeah, I think the landing gear might be damaged after that one. Let's have a look at the instant replay. Here we go. Let's go to the outside view. So the common mistake here, we're too high. We flare too high and we cut the power. Now, that's a lot of force on that landing gear. I think there'd probably be some damage after that one. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to recover from that situation if we flare too high. All right, so here we go. We're gonna uh, recover from that flare that was done too high it's very hard to recover from this one because in your mind you think hey i flared at the right altitude but maybe all of a sudden you realize oh i'm way too high above the ground so let's say we just like flare here by mistake oh my god i'm way too high let's add power full power okay get that speed back hold this attitude here and then conduct a normal flare so hold the attitude reduce power bring the nose up power idle and there we're on the ground this one is very tricky most of the time you're better off just getting over there doing conducting an overshoot or a missed approach or whatever you want um, so let's go ahead and look at the replay there
All right, so here we are. So we realized, oh, we flared, but we realized, hey, we're too, we're way too high. So we go full power, get out of there, hold that attitude. Once you have it stabilized, then you can begin your normal flare, holding the attitude, power idle, bring the nose slightly up, and touch down. It's very critical that when you realize you're here, don't just add a little bit of power. You got to add full power because your speed is very, very low. You're in a nose up attitude can be very dangerous. You got to add full power without hesitating. And when you do add full power, don't, you got to be careful with your nose because if you pull back on the uh, controls and you bring the nose too too far up you might still stall the aircraft even though you have full power so it's very important just to kind of maintain um, the same attitude that you were in cruise attitude even all right so that's it for that one and let's talk about a couple more things All right, here we go. So in this example, we have about a 15 knot crosswind from the left and it's pushing our aircraft. So we're doing a crosswind landing here. I'm not gonna really discuss the techniques used. I'm just gonna um, point out a couple main things, mistakes that could happen. So here I've seen it many times where we're crabbing for that wind. Everything looks good. But what happens if we just land sideways? The aircraft wants to go off and weathercock into the wind. So what happened there, we didn't use any rudder at all and we just let the aircraft do whatever it wanted, victimized by that wind. So let's go ahead and uh, correct that. So obviously we don't want to end up in the grass here, that would be bad, but um, simply by using rudder and uh, wind inputs on the Evron, we can definitely correct that situation. So let's go ahead and restart that situation and uh, we'll talk about how to do it properly. All right, so here we are, we're back with that 15 knot crosswind from the left. And we're gonna slow down here, we're gonna extend some flaps. And very important as we get into the flare we're using our rudder to track the center line keep the nose in line with the center line as we do that we're gonna need a little left bank just a slight left bank to counteract that yaw put it into a, a nice slip so here we go at this point I'm gonna use the rudder and ailerons holding that and then using rudder don't stop correcting because the wind wants to push you. Using rudder to maintain center line. Very important because if I just let go of the rudder, the aircraft's going to see how see how fast that goes into the wind. Very important. All right, so let's take a look on the replay here. What exactly happened? See, I'm crabbing, that's fine. Now, right when I start my flare, boom, I kick the rudder, and I touch down. You see how it's, it, I'm still fighting it the whole way. My rudder's not the greatest in terms of control and sensitivity, but you get the idea always, and that's where I showed you what could happen. So, always be using that rudder in a crosswind to keep the center line. So that's a, a quick example of a, a crosswind landing, what, what could happen if you don't use the proper inputs. 
All right, so we're coming into a short runway here, and I'm going to explain how important it is to have a go-around point. So in this example, I'm going to purposely land long, and we're going to discuss the dangers of that and what could happen. So let's say, okay, we're coming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit high. So that's fine. We, we got enough distance here. And then let's say we... We think, oh yeah, I can still, I'm fine, no problem. And then all of a sudden we get into the flare. Maybe the aircraft floats a bit. And then all of a sudden we're, we're almost at the end of the runway. And we try to stop, but then we end up, boom, in the grass. It's obviously not, not good in, uh, that could have been easily, easily uh, rectified if we had a point on the runway in which we weren't, or if our wheels weren't down by, we would have gone around or conducted a go around. So let's uh, let's go back and we're going to pick a point on the runway. All right, so we're back here on approach, and so here we go. I'm just going to pause and discuss where my point is it's going to be hard to see but let's pause uh so let's zoom in a bit here so obviously if we touch down by this little apron here that's too far right we're going to end up in on that side so i think if i pick a point maybe halfway so there's a threshold halfway between that and the apron if i touch down by that point i should be fine so that's my touchdown point. If I cross that point, if I'm not touched down by that point, I conduct a go around. Pretty easy. A lot of people don't do this though. That's where they get into trouble. So here we are, we're all configured. Now I'm looking at the point a little bit before that because we got to account for the flare. So I'm kind of judging right at the threshold I'm looking at. I'm trying to keep that point steady in the windscreen. I clear these trees here, and bring the power back a little bit. Get into the flare. Oh, that was a little rough landing, but we're down. So you can see how important it is, and we have lots of room. There we go. And we made it down, we even stopped before the apron. Uh, the touchdown was a little bit early there, but uh, I'm happy with that. So that's how you can fix landing too long. Just have a point where you have in your mind, okay, if I cross that point, if I'm not touched down by that point, I will be going around for another attempt. Very easy.